Now on my desktop, I'm just going to make a folder. So make directory Python beginner. And if you go to your desktop, you should have a new folder there. So let's navigate to that folder. And I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it tutorial.py. And let's open the folder. In my desktop, you can see there it is. So just open it. And you can start coding in this file. So the most basic thing you can type is just a print statement. So print hello. And then if I want to run this down here, I'm running Python 3. And then just type the file name. Cool. There it is. Now I'm going to teach you the fundamentals of programming for Python. Now these concepts apply for pretty much all programming languages, but let's do it for Python. Now starting with the variables, a name equals to Mitch Coco. And I can say age is 28. And that's it. That's how you store information into variables. And then we can manipulate these variables using some conditions. So the classic if statement, let's say if the age is less than 18, then let's print child. And then you got the else if age is less than 30, then let's print young adult. And then you got the else, which is everything else. We can say you're an old man. So if I just run this, you can see because I'm age 28, I am a young adult. Cool. So those are some basic conditions. Next, we have loops. So we have the for loop first. So we can say for i in the range 5. If I just print this, if you look at the terminal, it'll print 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we have another type of loop called a while loop which is similar, but it's set up a little bit differently. So for this, we're going to need to set up a variable. Let's say i equals to zero. And while this condition is true, we're always going to execute. So while i is less than five, let's just print it. And if I save this and I run it, you can see it's kind of gone into an infinite loop. It just keeps printing out zero because zero is always gonna be less than five. And so this will always be true. So it looks like it's just continuously printing this. So I should do something here. Let's say i plus equals to one. So what that means is we're just going to add one to i. And if I just run this again, then you can see that first part is the for loop. And then now for the while loop, it's outputting the same numbers. So two different ways to execute loops. Now the next concept to learn is functions. So you can say define a function, I'm gonna call it greet, and we can input a parameter called name. So we can say print, hello, and whatever the name is. And so now down here we can call the function, right? Let's say the name is Steve Jobs. Then if I save this and I print it, you can see it says, hello, Steve Jobs. Cool, so functions are useful because we want to reuse code, right? So all this stuff up here, we could actually put these in a function. So let's say the first one is a conditions function. And then in Python, you have to make sure the indentation is all good. Same thing for these loops, we could put them in a function. And so instead of just executing them all the time, we can call them and execute them whenever we want, right? So if I call the for loop, then we can execute that. If I call the conditions function, then we can execute that one. Awesome. Now for some simple data structures. The most basic one is a list. So we can have a list of say fruits, apple, banana, and cherry. Now, if you want to access them, we can say fruits and then put in the placeholder integer. So fruits zero will become apple, fruits one will become banana and so on.
And some basic ways to change these lists is you can say append to add on something new. And you can say remove to remove that item from the list. Awesome. And then one of the final ideas that you should learn is classes. So let's say I'm going to create a class called a person. And inside this person class, we're going to define a function here. So an init, which stands for initial or initialize. And I'm going to also accept a name and an age and just set this person's name and age to these parameters. And let's also have a method for greeting and we can print out this message. Cool. So once we've defined a class like this, we can now create this person object. Let's say some random person is equal to this person and we can give it the name and the age. And then we can play around with this object. So if I say random person dot name, we can access their name. And we can also access any of the functions that they had, like the greet. Now it looks like we have this error because this self age you can see is not a string. We gave them an integer, like we gave them a number. So if you want to convert it to a string, let's just put it in this str to so string and then put the self age. And if I rerun this, then yes, you can see we can now print this message. Awesome. And that's basically the fundamentals of programming or Python, but this applies to pretty much every programming language. So this idea of variables, conditions, you got these loops and functions and some basic data structures like a list and how to use a class. So let me know if that was helpful and I'll catch you in the next one.